But you see each and every one of these little white dots? Oh well, yeah, that's a place you can go to. Not to mention all of these places right through here. And it is infinite. What's up, guys? It's Ryantium here, and today we are back in No Man's Sky. That's right, you guys, and oh snap, it's gonna be an awesome freaking day. But first, if you guys enjoy what you're about to see, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more daily videos. And if you haven't done already, follow me on Twitter. Link is down there in the description. So, guys, welcome, welcome back. And happy Wednesday, everybody. So I'm just flying around here in the camera mode. I found this last night when I was doing my thumbnails and stuff like that. And turns out it's like a fully fledged camera mode. Check this out. You can move the sun just to anywhere you want. You can make it nighttime if you want. Just so freaking cool. It can be noon. Just kind of a neat little thing. And you can change different settings. Uh, you can change like fog levels and cloud levels and all of that crazy stuff. But... As you can see, from the last episode, I went ahead and repaired our ship. And I gotta say, it's a pretty neat looking ship, you know? I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of an interesting looking ship. The last one that we had, the Yakomaku or whatever the hell it was, definitely one of those things where I knew it was a piece of crap to begin with. But, I figured today, let's go ahead and start out by doing a little bit of exploration on the planet. You know, we have that off-planet signal beacon that we have to go to. Or actually, wait a second. It says we're gonna arrive in eight minutes. I thought it was off-planet. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, well, let's let's fly over there then. Actually, no, you know what? Let's go ahead and pop a squat at this monolith directly beneath me. Looks like there's some animals right there. I'm gonna go ahead and land right there, guys. Better get out of the way. There we go. So we're going to plop down right here, and there's an alien monolith. What are you screaming about, you dumb thing? Look at the size of that little animal. He's a little rat. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so I made a little bit of money last night after I had cut the video, we'll go to here in a second, but had to make a little bit of money because those red slots inside of our ship, they cost money to repair. Kind of an interesting concept, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more slots, and then there's this stuff. Now I had no idea what this was, but apparently there's extra slots, so you can you can install engine upgrades, weapon upgrades, all that stuff, so that it doesn't take up your regular slots. If you're doing cargo hauling or anything like that, you can upgrade your weapons in the technology section. Kind of a neat little spot. Uh, but I assume it gets bigger with bigger ships, so we'll find that out, obviously, as the series goes on. But, let's see. Uh, we need to get some iron to recharge our pulse engine. But what was I about to do? Oh, I was just showing you about that. But yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing. You have to pay to open up the slots on your ship. But I guess we'll get there eventually. But let's see. What do we got? These are word, word knowledge stones. And we learned the word give in Gek. So I don't think I did a good enough job in the first episode explaining what exactly the the races were, like the races of aliens in this galaxy are. Uh, so let me be a little bit more frank with you. So the Gek, they're more reptilian. They're kind of little guys. Think Ewok, but think reptiles. Um, and then there is the Vikin or the Viking. They're kind of warriors. If you've played Halo, think of a mix between the Elites and the Brutes. Honestly, that's exactly what they look like. And then maybe give them an alien mouth. Um, and then there's the Corvax, and the Corvax is a robot, it's a robotic race. Think C-3PO, honestly, just think C-3PO and Daft Punk. That's another good way to think of it. C-3PO and Daft Punk. Um, so those are the three different races. I believe there's a fourth, but I, I guess we're gonna find that out as the story goes on. I did a little bit of research on the wiki, but I didn't want to do too, too much, you know? So, we're at the ruins of Ursiolar. It's a Gek monolith. What do we got? It's kind of a neat looking thing. It's just a, a standing diamond. Okay, that is not English. <laughs> that is not English. I see a strange vision. A small winged creature lands on the very top of the monolith. Suddenly, its eyes glow red, and its head revolves in a circle. That's terrifying. It screams for mercy in an ancient voice that wants itself dead. The poor animal has clearly broken its neck, but the monolith's power of, of possession still animates it. I wonder if the right thing would be to shoot it and put it out of its misery. Well, if it wants to die that much, let's just shoot it. The poor winged creature is no more. The monolith rewards my actions. Was that the correct thing? Your standing with the Gek has increased. Cool. And I got full health from that. And I learned the... Uh, whoa. The Atlas word for awake. Interesting. And I got a Gek relic. Neat. 
always good to get some of that stuff. It's also a very good idea to learn the languages of each race, you know. That was one thing that I found that was very interesting with No Man's Sky the first time I played through it a little bit, is each race has their own language, you know. And through knowledge stones and through finding these ancient alien monoliths, you actually learn the entire language if you're lucky enough. So I'm talking every single word. I'm talking like the and like hey and like warnings and all that stuff you learn all of the keywords to the to the language it gets a little bit tedious at times i will say that but it's certainly a neat concept so let's see we got a beacon right here let's go ahead and check this out let's go ahead and see what we got going on at this signal beacon and is there a save point here i don't think there is oh good floating boxes nice let's go ahead and get some more of this rusted metal out it's, it sells for a decent bit, that's why I'm grabbing all this stuff. Plus, we're getting, like, daggers and these gek relics. Those sell for a decent bit if we're in the right system. Okay, my inventory is full. Let's go ahead and transfer some of this stuff over. Picked up more of these nanite clusters. Apparently, it is a dense miasma of nanites undulating in its potentiality. That is a lot of big words. <laughs> Used in the construction of advanced technologies, highly valuable to specialist traders. So it's probably a good thing that we got a few of those. And then let's see, we can go ahead and open this up now. We got a power canister. Always good to have. I assume that's for recharging stuff. Now let's see, waypoint. Distress beacon located, life signs detected. The plot thickens. Oh, it's viscousy now. Mm-hmm. Alright, now let's see. Where is it pointing me? To another distress signal. I just came from, I just came to this distress signal, and now I need to go to that distress signal. What is this going to be a distress signal hopping kind of day? I guess so. But let's see, while we're here, let's go ahead and gather up some materials, because we need to go up to the space station in a little bit and sell some of this stuff. That way we can start making a little bit of cash, a little bit of cash monets. we put all that stuff in there. We don't need carbon. We'll keep this canister with us, and we'll be good to go on that front. Okay, so actually, let's see. I need to pick up this zinc right here. Is there anything around me that's valuable? Let's see. Got some Thamium-9 over there. I'm certainly getting back into it, guys. I'm definitely getting back into it. Um, it's, it's kind of a learning curve if you don't know what you're doing from the beginning. But like I said in the first video, I really didn't know a whole lot about the new stuff. But the old stuff, I definitely know about, you know? What's up, you little guys? How you doing? You got your baby with you? <laughs> Looking at the animals is always such a fun part, too. It's kind of a nifty thing. Just having different animals on every planet. It's kind of crazy. So we'll go ahead and get some of this Thamium-9. Thamium-9 is what you need. It's one of the ingredients in hyperspace fuel, if I'm not mistaken. Hyperdrive fuel. Let's go ahead and grab some iron, too. We're going to need to get some iron. I'm going to need to recharge my multi-tool here very soon. In fact, probably within, like, the next 10 seconds. There we go. And it's depleted. Let's see. Let's go ahead. What can I use to recharge this? Oh, I can use this power canister. Oh, it barely gave anything back. Okay, note to self. Don't use that for that. <laughs> Alright, so we'll go ahead and grab some more iron. We'll refuel our power thingy on our ship. What's it called? Let's see. Our pulse engine on our power thingy. There we go. Full power on the pulse engine, so we'll be good to go. I have to, I have to assume we're gonna need to we're gonna need to carry a lot of iron with us, so it might be a good idea once we get some money to get into like a big trading ship, because I believe there's four types of ships in the game. No, there's only three, as far as I'm concerned. There's the traders, the fighters, and the explorers. So, unless there's a fourth like special one, I'm not, I don't know about. Then I guess we could go from there, but a trading ship is definitely something that we should probably get into So let's go to that next distress signal and see what's there Okie dokie, so I was just chilling up in space mining some asteroids and stuff like that And I decided to name some of our discoveries, but I was taking a look at some of this stuff inside of here There's a lot of good stuff in here like check this out base construction Uninhabited bases can be found throughout exploration or use of the signal booster. Visit the terminal inside to establish a base. And apparently it requires a Viking... Where did it say? Oh no, that was the other one. That was for the vehicles. Um, but let's see. Apparently you can only have one base that could be owned at a time. But I'm curious to see if that's one base per planet or one base like per game. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's one base per game, that's kind of bad. But I guess we'll get to that... Yeah, um, eventually, you know, but we got navigation and discovery vehicles right here. I can't wait to get into that, dude. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. Finding resources, carbon, plutonium, thamium-9, isotope element. I mean, it's nuts. There's so much stuff in here, but it gets even better. Apparently, 
There's this stuff right here. I had never had any of this stuff. So in No Man's Sky, you have journey milestones. So if you travel a certain amount, if you make a certain amount of money, you know, like right here, earned 89,589 credits, next milestone in 10,000 credits. And you get a new business, or uh, you get a new milestone and stuff like that. And the more milestones you have, the further into the game you can go. That was always a thing. But right here, you got the Gek, the Vikin, and the Corvax. And then apparently there's guilds. I didn't know about this. There's merchant guilds, mercenaries guilds, and explorers guilds. Chances are the ones that we're really going to get in depth with is the merchant guild and the explorers guild. That's for sure. But I also went ahead and named our system that we're currently in, our solar system. We have two planets and one moon. Its dominant life form is the Gek. It is ore processing economy as well as sustainable. And uh, conflict level is belligerent, so I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> I know what belligerent means. Normally you use that when you're drunk, but hopefully <laughs> hopefully it's okay. Uh, and so the name of the system is Gemini 1, and the name of the planet is Frostbite because it's a frosty planet. But we're directly above where we need to go, so let's go ahead and check this out together, shall we? It's a distress signal. So let's see, what do we got? All right, coming in onto the planet. Looks like a building of some sort. <clears throat> Might be a base. But I don't know why they would... Let's see. Oh, that's not a... That's on fire. What is this? Hang on. What is this? Okay, let's see. Oh, look at the size of this thing. Look at that thing. It's got two freaking tails. Sweet. I just got 1,500 credits for getting that guy. Oh, my God. Oh, this is a freighter. Hang on. A crashed freighter known as the SV Emperor Hira... Hira... Yeah, that, that. <laughs> that right there is what it is. Dude, what? Holy shit, this thing is huge. Giggity. <laughs> oh my, it, it goes even further over there. Holy cow. This must be like the back of the ship or something. But let's see, there's the distress signal right here. Oh, there was a place to park my damn ship. Let's see, can I make a bypass chip? No, I can't. I need plutonium. Damn! Fine, whatever. Alright, now let's see. Uh, investigate interact freighter terminal. What do we got? Partial records available. The signal has led me to the wreck of a freighter. Colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Did it break apart on impact? I wonder. Or was it already sundered when it began its final descent? Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log blinking, awaiting input. Request the log. Ship logs requested accessing. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly comes from the comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. What? I pull the blueprint from the computer, but this hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. Oh man, we already can build a damn hyperdrive? FTL propulsion uh, drive that allows starship to attain warp speed and jump between neighboring star systems. User is advised to access hyperdrive systems through galactic map. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm excited now, dude. I'm so freaking excited. Because, I mean, we had hyperdrives in the beginning, you know. But it was never this early. I'm pretty sure you had to go around, like, scouring buildings and stuff like that, trying to find the blueprint. So that's pretty freaking sweet. Okay. Now, let's see. Is there anything around this freighter? That looks to be maybe, like, a, a hangar bay or something like that. I'm not sure. This is this is dope. Okay, yeah. I, I rarely use that word, but this is dope. All right, so let's see. Also, I wanted to let you know about these little guys right here. These little things are known as sentinels, and there's three types of sentinels uh, from, like, the base game. You've got these little guys, sentinel drones, there's the sentinel, like, four-legged dog things, and then there's basically, if you can imagine what an ATST, all-terrain scout tr uh, transport from Star Wars, the miniature all-terrain walkers, if you can imagine that thing, imagine that thing painted red and orange and with a gigantic glowing red eye uh, shooting lasers at you. Not a fun thing to have uh, thrown at you, but it's certainly very cool to see. Now let's see, where do we need to go? We need to go into the stars. So let's see, uh, are we going, we're going to the space station. Very cool, you guys will get to see the space station. But before we go, I want to see 
if they changed something. So in the base game, when it first came out, and I'm sorry I'm hearkening back to the beginning of the base game, but that's really all I have to compare this to, you know? Um, in the beginning, if you found a big deposit of minerals, you could not mine it from your spaceship. You had to, like, land right next to it, and then you had to shoot it with, uh, with your laser. But let's see, this is a deposit of iridium, I believe. I walked past one earlier. Let's make sure we have enough room, and we have the phase beam out. Oh, my, oh, no, that's copper. Okay, I thought it was iridium. Oh, dude, that's so nice. Oh, shoot, that's cool. That makes it so much easier, dude. You can just swoop down, get a little bit of copper or iridium or anything like that. But let's see. You guys didn't see this in the last episode. So this is this is regular boost speed. If I boost towards the space station, it'll take, it'll take like four minutes to get there. But if we can get there even faster by boosting. Oh, wha bam <laughs> <laughs> and now it takes seconds to get there, you know? It's one of those things that is absolutely necessary to get between uh, to get between planets because I've I've seen some planet solar systems where the planets are like a minute and a half apart even in this kind of super cruise kind of thing. So let's see. Space station's coming right up and it's a gigantic triangle. <laughs> it's actually a pyramid, but looks like a triangle from one side. So let's go ahead and head in. We can also do a little bit of selling here. Okay, I had to do a little bit of a barrel roll and a backflip, and now we're coming into land. Oh gosh, I got I get such a sci-fi high playing this game, dude. Freaking love it. Oh my that thing just almost took the freaking cockpit of my ship off. Come on, bro. This is a fly slow zone. It's a no wake zone, bruh. That's a weird looking ship. It's kinda phallic. <laughs> Alright, so we'll go ahead and come up here. This is where all the action takes place inside of space stations. And there's a bunch of aliens up here, so we can go and talk to them, and I can show you what they look like, finally. So here's your Viking guys. That's what they look like. They're really ugly. <laughs> and then we have the Gek right here. They're little kind of reptilian Ewoks, like I was saying. But let's do a little bit of selling right here. So we can go ahead and sell some of this stuff from my, my thingy. So let's see, sell from my exosuit inventory. We can sell this Con Corvax Conversions Cube, the Viking Dagger... And then there's all of this stuff. I saw this when I was selling stuff last night. I don't know what all this stuff is, but it sounds amazing. Teleport coordinators, optical solvents, ion spheres. Like, what is all this freaking stuff? But it's also got, like, these little symbols right here. So the red means it's below, or it's above the galactic average. The green means it's below the galactic average. Or vice versa. So for selling, you want things to be above the, the galactic, aver uh, galactic average, but buying, you want them to be below the galactic average, if that makes sense. But let's see, starship inventory. We can go ahead and sell all of this rusted metal. We have a decent bit. This Gek relic. Copper. We don't need copper yet, I don't think. Okay, wonderful. So now, what do we need to do? Construct the hyperdrive. Buy a dynamic resonator from a space station. Oh, okay, it looks like we have to buy something. That's fine. All right, buy items from the Galactic Trade Network. So, let's see. These tiny but incredibly strong tubes are required in the construction of tiny but incredible, st incredibly strong scientific components. So this stuff might be stuff for crafting, maybe? I'm not sure. But there should be a dynamic resonator right here. It's above the galactic average, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're kind of at the beginning of the game, so we really need to get all of this stuff, you know? All right, so we have our dynamic resonator. So that's a good thing. Now we need a little bit more heridium. I might be able to buy some here, but before we buy some, let's go ahead and talk to some of these guys. Is that so? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're speaking. Small creature is busy adding up trade profits when I appear. Their eyes open wide in anticipation of our first contact, and they rub their fingers together greedily. The life form pecks emphatically at the monetary figures on their pad, then bounces up and down. I can't help but notice that they smell amazing. Hmm, I wonder what a gek smells like. Apologize for being unable to help. Lifeform looks disappointed they take pity on my confusion and give me some units. Dude just paid me because he felt bad. He almost paid, almost paid me a thousand units for that. I'll take it. Thanks, bro. And your standing with, your grec, with the Gek is increased. Now what's this guy got to say? You got some drill bits coming out of your face there, bro. I don't understand you either. Sorry. The warrior's nostrils flare as I approach. They inhale deeply and bark out what could be a warning. I hurriedly mime that I am peaceful and know little of their kind language. They take a second to think, 
then grab my multi my multi tool while barking again into my visor, streaking it with saliva. They point to my indicator that shows which elements I carry. I do my best to keep calm. Let's give them some iron. The warrior grunts, they teach me some of the language of their people. I guess that was the correct answer. <laughs> Sweet. And my standing with the Viking has, inter has increased as well. Wonderful. And then what's this guy right here? What do we got? Technology merchant. The space stations have changed so much since the beginning. Oh my goodness. The creature offers me blueprints for ship upgrades in exchange for nanite clusters. Oh, there's your nanite clusters. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's a whole bunch of... Whoa. Freighter, Warp Reactor, Sigma, Phase Coolant, Taw, Infra, Knife, Accelerate... What is all of this awesome stuff? Conflict Scanner. Oh, that might be a good thing to have. Warp Reactor, Taw. We need we need uh, to be friends with whom? The Gek, I assume? So there's a blueprint for a better Warp Reactor here. So once we have our Warp Reactor, there's three other Warp Reactor blueprints that go along with your ship to increase the distance per jump and the access to different colored systems. It's kind of a nifty, uh, kind of a nifty thing, but we need a thousand fungal mold, 600 nickel, and two dynamic resonators. I don't know what that fungal mold is, but apparently we need 200, or actually no, we need to be friends with him first. But this conflict scanner might not be a bad idea. We need 150 iridium and 200 thamium, as well as 200 nanite clusters. So maybe we'll come back and do that and see what that guy has to offer. But let me go ahead and grab the rest of the iridium to make the hyperdrive, and uh, we'll see what it does. Whoa, look at this ship. Check that thing out. It looks like a- what the hell? That thing- oh my god, it's got freaking five engines on the back of it. This thing's kind of cool. Oh my god, look at this guy. Holy freaking, like, frill. Amyart Ushi- yeah, that. That- that language. The pilot clicks their beak to indicate that they are open to trading. They might also be open to discuss the sale of their starship. Neat! Now let's see, make an offer on the lifeform starship. So this is how you get- oh my god, this is nice. Um... This is how you get better ships. You have to find them in space stations and at trading posts on the planet and all that stuff, and they they are procedurally generated. So once you don't get one, or if you see one you like and you have enough money, you better buy it, or else you might not see it again in the universe, you know? But this already has a hyperdrive, launch thruster, everything is done, and it has more slots than my ship. 20 bucks says this thing is insanely expensive. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's bad. Oh yeah, it's bad. 7,720,000 freaking credits. But that's because this starship is worth 8 million credits. My trade-in price is only 330,000. I know why. I know exactly why it's th why that. It's because of these. These are not open. So that means, like, the, the price of the ship has been diminished. So that kind of sucks. But that's a damn good ship for it being a fighter, too. But okay- Whoa! Look at the size of this thing. Oh, it looks disgusting, but I want it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so now that we have the the freighter, or let's see, we have this, the, what the, what the hell is it called? The frame shift, not frame shift drive, I'm talking about Elite Dangerous, the hyper drive right here. Let's go in and install this bad boy. Now, how much do these cost? 30,000? Holy Jesus. Now, let's see, we need to charge this with a warp cell. Now, let's see, objectives updated, awakenings. Okay. Right. Uh, seek answers among the stars. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead and blast off real quick. And we'll come out into the stars, into the void. Alright, now let's see. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm cycling through... Whoa, look at that. You're cycling through targets. Well, that's kind of nifty. Alright, now let's see. Search for the mysterious messenger. Look for the clues with the starship scanner. Okay. Message amplified, target locked. Let's see. Where is the target? There it is. Okay. It seems to either be on the moon. Anomalous broadcast. Let's go check that out real quick. Apparently I can't boost just yet. But there's an anomalous broadcast. That is a big freaking asteroid. All right. So we'll go to this anomalous broadcast. But I just noticed the moon or the planet that we were on, Frostbite, it has a moon, just like our moon. Look at that. It's much smaller than the planet Frostbite. But that's what's kind of interesting about No Man's Sky, is every planet that you go to is fully explorable. Fully explorable. Oh, we're landing on the moon. Oh, look at this. New planet. 
Velier Waven? Unwear. Okay, bless you. <laughs> Let's see what this place has to offer. It, it looks like it might be irradiated slash toxic because of the green and yellow mist that's coming up over the uh, up over the horizon. It's certainly looking pretty green down there. Look at this. Oh, dude, we might have just found a low atmosphere planet or a low atmosphere moon. Because if you notice, there's not a cloud barrier between us and space. And like I was saying in the first episode, there are planets like that that exist. Oh, I think it's raining, too. Look at that. Okay. Yes, indeed, it is raining. Now, let's see. Is there a cloud barrier between us? There's a very minimal cloud barrier between us. So, let's see. It is one of... Okay. Caustic moisture, regular, regular sentinels, copious amounts of flora, and intermittent levels of fauna. So, it's a caustic moon, meaning there is... Uh, toxic damage being done to my suit and all that stuff. Look at that! What the hell is that thing supposed to be? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's a big-ass derpy dinosaur is what it is. Okay, let's see. So it looks like where we need to go is right in here. This is kind of a neat-looking planet. But yeah, as you can see, there's a very low level of clouds. But dude, look at that. You can see the damn planet. So freaking cool. Oh, this is one of the derelict places. I remember these. Let's see. Abandoned terminal. What is this? Residual goop. <laughs> More stuff that I can sell. Nice. I'll take it. Now, what do we got? Terminal online selecting key decrypting. Success. The terminal is clogged with an unnerving pulsating slime. Nevertheless, it appears to function. As I touch the input panel, the alien substance reacts violently. I make a note to avoid getting closer. The device opens, revealing a single unblinking crimson eye. It deposits a sample of antimatter, accompanied by a strange message. Read log and take antimatter. You will find us when the time is right. That's not cryptic whatsoever. Oh, even better, just a bunch of 16s. <laughs> <laughs> Antimatter. So that's one of the main ingredients in crafting warp cells, as it says now. Now we need to craft the warp cell, but let's see. A research specimen. Your standing with the Gek has increased. Always a good thing. And we're a client with the Gek. Isn't that neat? We're ranking up pretty well, guys. Definitely ranking up pretty well. Got some more plutonium. I bought some while we were back on the uh, back in the station. Let's go ahead and grab that rusted metal. Always good. And we got another Corvax Convergence Cube. Nice! So let's go ahead and grab this... What the fudge is that? Th that is that is a cow with two legs. What is that thing? <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just stock up on a little bit of this plutonium. You can never have too much plutonium, honestly. All right. So now let's see. We need to go ahead and get a save in right over here at this little spot. Always nice to have these things all around the place. Go ahead and save. There we go. The Tukal Wetlands. This is a beautiful little area, though, but I don't think building on a toxic planet is the smartest thing to do. This thing is a, a freaking antelope with two legs. What is it doing? Look at the size of this thing. This sucker's huge. Now, if you want to hunt the wild, uh, what's it called? Uh, Lirium uh, Ohib. Yeah, that. If you want to hunt that, you gotta get real close. Real close. What is this thing? That's an iron ball. Holy Jesus. Okay. So there's a decent bit of plutonium, plutonium, that's a hard word to say sometimes, on this planet. I learned the Gek word for Gek. That's interesting. You would have thought it would have just been Gek. <laughs> Alright, now let's see. Where do we need to go now? Where's my map? Um, oh wait, it said craft a warp cell. Can I craft a warp cell? What do I need? I need Thamium-9. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see. Um, where I just saw Thamium-9, I think. Yes, there's some right here. I don't know if that'll be enough. I need to get a hundred Thamium-9. Let's see, we might have to do a little bit of exploration on this planet to get some more Thamium. There's Zinc, Plutonium... I thought I had Thamium-9. I could have sworn that I picked up like a bunch of it. Starship... I guess there's not. Okay, so let me do a little bit of looking around, see if I can't find some Thamium, and then I think we're going to have to end off uh, have to end off today's episode. But let me get that Thamium, and then we'll bring you guys back in. Okie dokie, so I have, the, I have the warp cell charged, or I have the warp drive charged, although I don't think it updated in the quest log, so hopefully this works. But before we end off today's episode, guys, I figured I may as well show this to you. So check this shit out, alright? The galaxy map. 
This was always one of my favorite parts whenever I went into this game. So, you see us here in Gemini 1. It has three celestial objects, meaning it's got two, two planets and two moons, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, does it say how many are there? I think you can see them, yeah. You got the planet, you got the moon around the planet, and then you've got... Let's see, it should say how many celestial objects are in each galaxy. Let's see, am I just missing it? Probably, honestly. I'm probably just missing it. But anyways, so that's where we're at. We're currently right there. But you see each and every one of these little white dots? Oh yeah, that's a place you can go to. Not to mention all of these places right through here. And it is infinite. Up, down, left, right, center, northeast, northwest, southwest, southeast. All of these places, dude. You can go all the way down. All of these places, all these white dots that you're seeing me fly by are places to go to. Um, now, are all of them fairly similar? I would say. Uh, some of them have a lot of variation in them, but uh, dependent upon the color of the star that you interact with, whether it's orange, red, yellow, or blue, determines the different types of celestial objects and um, uh, races that live there. You know, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and it's it's certainly interesting. So I think t I think right now is where we're gonna go ahead and end off today's episode. Uh, and I can't think of anywhere else <laughs> to uh, to log off or to uh, end today's episode at. But guys, I think I am indeed going to continue along with No Man's Sky. I'm really starting to get back into it. I'm really starting to enjoy it uh, and all that good stuff. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more daily videos. And if you haven't done already, follow me on Twitter. And guys, I will see you in the next video.